Hi everybody and welcome back to the class. I am Chad Murphy, also known as Soccer Metric on Twitter, uh, and this is lesson number four in my series of videos on how to do soccer analytics. And what I'm going to do today is talk about expected goals. This is obviously a big topic in the soccer analytics Twitter world, and it's becoming one of the more standard measures. So I wanted to show you all how to build a model here, and we're going to do it using NWSL data um, that I've been collecting on my own. Uh, heads up, this is going to be using a technique called regression. It gets a little fancier in correlation. It's the next logical step, but um, I go into some of it here. I skip over a lot of the process in this video. If you're more interested in how to do it, um, you can look at a couple videos. I did some on the uh, NWSL prediction model. I looked at regression. I gave you a quick sort of overview of that. Um, but I'll go over some of the basic concepts here, and if you want more, I will do as usual, the data appendix using R to this video. Um, one more note, I'm wearing my Milan hat as usual, and I've got my brand new Milan shirt. Let me lower the laptop so you can see my We Are AC Milan shirt as a birthday present, and so I wanted to show it off in my new videos. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So before I talk about how to build the model, I want to give a quick version of what exactly are expected goals. And the short version of this is it's a measure of shot quality. Given the attributes of a specific shot, how often would you expect someone to score from that shot? The idea is we're looking to see if a team takes a certain number of shots from a certain position with a certain characteristics, how many goals would you expect them to score? How likely is each shot to turn into a goal? And from there, how likely are they to score one, two, three, four, etc. goals from those shots. Um, you've probably seen these on Twitter. You've seen maybe Michael Cayley's expected goals maps. Um, Danny Page has some wonderful tools where you can look at simulations and how many goals you'd expect the team to score given their expected goals. Uh, but all it is really at its core is just a measure of the quality of a shot. How likely is that shot to score? The math behind these models gets a little fancy, a little complicated, but we're building a house here. The first three lessons have showed you some of the basics, and we're going to take a little bit of a jump ahead here, but not too much. My uh, 11th and 12th grade math teacher, Mr. Padovic, used to always talk about how math was about building a house. And you have to start with a solid foundation before you can move up. For this, correlation is that foundation, which the last set of videos went over. Um, so before you finish this set of videos right here, make sure you understand positive, negative, and zero correlation. What do those mean? Everything you build comes from these ideas. So if you don't have a solid foundation, if you don't fully grasp positive, negative, zero correlation, please take a step back, um, pause this video, go back to lesson three, rewatch it, make sure you understand that, because if you don't, a lot of this is going to be a pretty significant jump ahead. If you don't have that solid foundation, the rest of the house is going to collapse under you, um, which my 11th and 12th grade math teacher knew very well. Um, make sure you pay attention. Make sure you understand those concepts. And this shouldn't be that big a jump, assuming you know all that. So a quick recap. Building the main floor of the house, we're going to start off with this foundation of correlation. And correlation teaches us the strength of the relationship and the direction of the relationship. And that's it. You can see how closely two variables are related and if it's positive or negative, that relationship. So if it's positive, as one variable goes up, the other goes up. If it's negative, as one variable goes down, the other one goes up. This only works for two variables. You can't do a correlation for more than two variables. It's typically bivariate correlation. Um, so it doesn't show us the magnitude of the relation. As x goes up, how much does y go up? It doesn't show us the effect of multiple variables together. So how much does y go up as x and x2 and x3 go up? How do they work together? And also can't give us predicted values. So given a certain x, x1 and x2, what is the value of y? So given a certain distance, um, if it's kicked with your foot rather than headed, and if it's at a certain angle, what is the likelihood of a shot scoring? That's the foundation of the expected goals model, and that's why we use regression analysis here. 
as I said, regression solves this. Think back to your fifth grade math class, or whenever you did this, and you learned slope-intercept version of a line. You, remember, you might remember y equals mx plus b. I think it's actually seventh grade math. I remember Miss Borshevitz taught me this back in days of yore. Um, y equals mx plus b. m is the slope of the line, and b is the y-intercept. This is effectively the simplest version of a regression. You have a slope, and you have an intercept. And all you do from there is plug in x, and you can solve for y super easily. Regression is just a slightly fancier version of that. So if you can do y equals mx plus b, you can do regression.